Hello everybody, welcome to the IEP Live Learn Lunch. Really excited today to be joined by IEP fellow Vicky Sylvester from Acacia Training, who's going to be taking us through today's event. So with no further ado, I'm going to hand you over. Vicky, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Helen, and really good to see everybody. Um, and hope this is a useful session. Um, so as my contribution to the IEP, I offered to talk about people, planet, and prosperity and why these three things are important and becoming increasingly important in the employability sector and um, the world of work. So um, a little bit of background to who I am. Um, my background started in the care sector and my career started in nursing after working in social care. And then in 2000 started a business called Acacia Training, which is where I still am today. So I've been here now uh, 22 years and we deliver apprenticeships, adult learner loans, European social funds, um, AB funding, all sorts of different programs, um, dealing with lot, quite a lot of employability programs. Uh, we place 600 plus people on the Kickstart scheme, for example. Um, and uh, we look at predominantly the health and wellbeing sectors and the health and wellbeing space. Um, I have put a few things on there we're particularly proud of last couple of years we won Apprenticeship Provider of the Year, but we also won outstanding contribution um, to the social care sector at the Great British Care Awards. Um, I do have a few hats. Um, I'm also Executive Director of our parent company, which is MBH Corporation, um, which is a group of small businesses that um, all operate in different industries. So it gives me some really great industry insight into what's going on in those at the moment. I, am, uh, I look after the Staffordshire Partnership for Employment and Skills, which is a group of uh, stakeholders in, in the local area that I'm based in. And I'm also vice chair of a first school, which ends shortly. Um, but obviously, um, I was the chair, but then during COVID, although I was due to step down, it didn't seem the appropriate time to do that. But it's, it, we're, getting, we're getting through it now, aren't we? Um, and then I've put, just put there, really, that that all sounds very jazzy, but actually what really... Um, gets me motivated every day and, and gets me out of bed and gets me doing is, is having a positive impact on people um, and businesses um, and also our environment and um, our business is really driven by a sense of purpose um, and so that is something that is very uh, high on my agenda. So our purpose is about making education uh, accessible um, but it's about empowerment, it's about ensuring career opportunities for people how people can make a positive contribution to society and how they can have um, better lives and uh, hopefully move on to greater things. And that is really the driving force behind us. So what is ESG? Um, and there's all sorts of different types of titles for this. Um, there is CSR, we have people profit planet, there's all sorts of different terminology, but basically, it's looking at environmental, social, and governance. Um, so examples of the kind of things with an environmental, this is climate action, which is very high on the agenda at the moment. Um, for those that have watched anything to do with the COP26, I would really recommend having a look at um, David Attenborough's uh, speeches. They were absolutely inspiring um, about the work that we all need to do to get the planet in a better state. Um, but sustainability, how we can reduce waste and how we can reduce carbon, which is net zero, and how we can get closer to doing that. Um, social um, is equality, diversity, inclusion, human rights, social justice, um, and all the kind of things we do within, within there. And then the governance is looking at businesses and how they govern their organisation. So what does the equality, diversity, inclusion look like? What's their relationship like with employees? What's their purpose? What's their ethics? And they're all linked together, um, which is something I think sometimes is misunderstood. Um, so for example, if we have problems within the environment, this may have problems on people's health. It may have problems on their well-being. It may have problems on what employment is available. Um, and then in turn, that impacts people within society. So then we move to the social part. So the, and, and then we can have inequalities in health, for example. So if an area has you know, high um, environmental issues and that affects people's health in that local area, and then we have inequalities within the health system that mean the most vulnerable 
are the most at risk. Um, and we've seen some of that coming out of COVID as well. We know the most vulnerable are the ones that have been impacted more significantly. We're seeing it now with things like rising energy costs where again, the, the, the most vulnerable are being the hardest hit. So they're not, um, they're not single items, they're not silo items, they are all linked together. Um, and I think that education and employability and how we work with businesses and the influence we can have, we're perfectly placed to make a difference um, to the lives of people in our community and the, the kind of mission that we're all on. Um, so one of the things that um, hopefully, if you've not been aware of them, this will be something you'll go and look into um, more after this session was um, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, a very, very long word. So very often they're just referred to as the global goals. Um, and in, these were set out in 2015 by a group of world leaders that all committed to the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. And the idea of, of this was to have a global effort in tackling some of the challenges around the world to basically try to create a world where we can end poverty, we can fight inequality, and we can address uh, climate change. Um, so all the governments, the UK government adopted the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, they became part of it. And as you can see there, um, they're, they're all numbered and laid out. For example, there's no poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, quality education. Um, and what's really applicable to you will be UN SDG 8, which is about decent work and economic growth and um, how we can impact and create social equality and we can start to help um, communities prosper. Um, so these goals are all set out. They have more goals uh, like many KPIs that, that sit under them. Um, very ambitious, very ambitious plan. Are we on track with it? Um, no. Um, so these were set to be achieved by 2030. Some are more in front than others. Um, but for example, if we looked at the reduced inequalities at the rate we are making progress on that, it's going to take us another 246 years at the current rate, for example. So there's somewhere we're really excelling quite quickly and there's somewhere the progress has been a lot slower and, and climate action is also one of those. Although over the last few years, I think COVID has accelerated maybe some of those, those conversations as we move, in, move into the next phase. Um, so our mission is to have a positive impact on people, planet and prosperity locally, globally and nationally aligning with those goals. And one of the things I just wanted to, to kind of share on that is that I really do believe that the uh, people that we're dealing with now, um, especially young people that may end up having four or five careers now on their journey, um, are, are global citizens. And I think we're going to see an increase in more global activity going on business to business and I feel um, and this is only my belief that COVID's really accelerated that because the world just became smaller we all had to work together we had um, a common goal and um, technology improved a lot of businesses have improved their technology communication improved and um, so I think our people that we're working with now yes they are citizens in their communities but I think longer term they're also going to be and are part of a global community that's going to be more open to them. Um, and things like social media and so on, um, the flexibility of working arrangements, all those kind of things have, have, have really pushed that forward. Um, so I won't go through all of these, but um, if you ever did want to check out, we have made public commitments as an organization. So you can see those over there about creating opportunities for enrolling learners, creating jobs, career progressions, our social impacts, reducing our carbon emission. Um, and the reason we made those public is because then the public can hold us to account for that. And um, we can measure progress against it. Um, but I think we'll start to see more organizations doing this. And I think we'll start to see more people um, choosing where they work um, and wanting to work for organizations where they have got this social and environmental purpose. Um, our objectives within that, you can see we're looking at innovation, how can we improve life, how can we have strong, impactful relationships, um, it talks about culture, supply chains, how we can break down barriers, how we can target inequalities, 
all these wonderful things that we're already doing in our everyday work. It's just aligning them with a more global and common um, goal to help tackle some of these um, in, in the future. But you can have a look at all of those. I'm sure you'll get copies of the slides and you can have a look at the kind of uh, targets that we've, we've set out. So how have we approached it, which um, may be something that's, that's useful to your organisations. Um, we started with what we called the driving goal. Um, so we are an education provider. We also do employability. Um, but we decided to start with our driving goal being quality education. Um, and what that meant was from there, we've driven our actions and our objectives and our targets. And as you can see there, why this is important as inclusive and quality education provides upward socioeconomic mobility. It helps people get out of poverty. It helps people, um, it helps us to reduce inequalities and it helps us to foster tolerance and peaceful societies. So this is why education really matters. Um, and I think we are in such a wonderful place as um, employability professionals, as educational professionals, to be able to build this into the work we're doing to help businesses and people understand more about all of this kind of area. Um, education um, is the key to being able to inform and help others understand and understand how they can contribute and what they need to do. So the businesses we're working with, for example, um, this is going to be critical for them, but they don't know what they don't know. And we are really well positioned to be able to support and help them understand all of this. So quality education is our driving goal. And then that's supported by our subsidiary goals, as we've called them. Now, the reason we didn't look to cover every single goal was because that would just be overwhelming. So we chose how we could have and where we could have the biggest impact. Um, and where we could make the biggest difference so that it would keep us focused and not, um, you know, just going into this with huge amount of options and huge amount of opportunities. Um, so our other goals are decent work and economic growth. And you can see there, this is important and imply in, in promoting inclusive, sustainable economic growth and decent work for all. But this can drive progress and create decent jobs for all. It can improve living standards. Um, and this is what we're all, all aiming to do. And then under that, there's some other goals specific for us. Reducing inequalities, again, would be very aligned with the work you're all doing. Um, and gender equality is quite important for the, for the sectors we're in. Um, climate action is important to everybody. And then also we chose good health and well-being. We think we can have a positive impact on people's mental health, people's physical health, um, again, helping them get into work. So where we used to have sort of strategies around equality, diversity, inclusion, and um, we may have had a um, sustainability policy or strategy, we actually now have really linked it all into this environmental, social and governance strategy. And those other pieces of work feed off that. And this is the driving force behind it and gave us something measurable that we can now um, work towards to look at. Um, so to give you a clue of how we started and the journey we've been on, and just to make it clear, this is a journey. Um, nobody knows everything, uh, constantly learning. There's constantly new information coming out and new research. Um, it is a journey, but like everything, you have to put your foot on the path and start that, that journey and build. You know, you don't need to do everything in a day. It's going to take a very long time. Um, but, you know, you put your foot on the path and you put your stake in the ground. And that's when you can start to really have, have an impact and be able to, to measure that. Um, so first of all, we identified the goals, um, which I think um, using that United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, we talked to our stakeholders, we talked to our team, um, and that's how we then decided. And then once we decided on our goals, we then made those high level commitments against those goals, um, which is what I showed you earlier on the slides that we then made public. So they sit within our, um, our goals that we uh, identified. And then the fun bit started. This is when the action started, which was looking at what do we do now? Um, what can we do more of? What do we need to learn? Um, and started to build out a series of, of actions. And they're mini steps, really. They're not, you know, massive 
things. They are mini steps taking us towards, you know, carbon net zero or taking us towards improving decent work and, and all those kind of steps and getting more people into jobs. Um, so we now have something measurable. Um, and if, you know, the famous saying goes, if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. So having some performance indicators that we've changed, you know, if we've learned more, they're not set in stone for the, for the end of time. Um, but it does give us some benchmarks and some things to work towards. And then about sharing it, sharing it with our team, our customers and our investors and suppliers, all about the work that we're doing. Um, and we were fortunate enough to achieve, well, I say fortunate, we worked very hard, but we are, we became a five-star supporter of Support the Goals because to get the fifth star on that program, you had to look at your supply chain. So we're looking at things like where our suppliers are sourcing equipment from, um, what, where the risks of modern slavery might be in the supply chain, are they using ethical products, um, and starting to build up that supplier um, network that's aligned with our vision and values, which is going to be a challenge, I'm not going to lie, but you know, again, you start somewhere and we're doing, we're doing quite a lot of work around that as well. The world's changing and we want our suppliers to come with us um, because they're the people creating jobs for others. They're the businesses and uh, yeah, they support our business too. Um, so at company level, how, how we did this, um, we started off with our values and purpose. Um, we've embedded all of this into our curriculum We've embedded into this, into our relationships with employers, our relationships with learners and prospective learners. Um, so once they engage with us, we are asking them questions about what have you done to support people and planet this month or different kinds of activities. And the purpose behind that is, you know, having them, giving them a sense of community as well really does help them everybody likes doing good things everybody so it really does help them to focus on their contribution um, and what they can do and it does have a real positive vibe for them as well and does make them feel very positive about what they're doing and um, we've created jobs um, our inclusivity and diversity programs and um, the fact we're growing and having an impact and our work towards net zero and um, so we reduced our carbon um, last year by 64 percent we went from 32 tonnes in 2020 to 11 tonnes in um, 2021, uh, 2021. Um, and now we're on that next stage, hopefully to continue to reduce that further. And then there's examples of policies and, and where they, they all feed into this. One of the things um, that might be a useful um, help for you is the committees that we've set up. So I've, I've, I've put some there on the slide of the different committees we've done. Um, but the committees are driven by people within the team. They're not driven by myself. So I've got volunteers from across the business. Um, they run those committees. They come up with the ideas. They put those ideas forward. They share stuff with the team. Um, and that's not just been about spreading the workload, but that's been about having that feedback coming in from our customers and our, um, our learners, our um people that are joining the programs looking for work and really getting their understanding and helping them drive our act part and our, on our action um, and being brutally honest people believe people in the team more than they believe me and this is the CEO of the business coming in with saying we're doing this they actually do listen more and take more on board from people within the team um, as they should and also those team members are sharing knowledge, they're sharing information and we're getting more wealth and more quality of information out of that. So if you are a business, that's certainly been something that's really been of great benefit, benefit to us. Um, on our website, you can go and have a look at this if you want to. We've got our business for good strategy. That's where you'll see our commitments. You'll see the impacts we've been having. Um, so the impact measure there we do through a partner organization called B1G1, which is buy one, give one. Um, and what we've done in the business is we've set up initiatives where for everything we do, we create a positive impact somewhere else. So, for example, if we get somebody into a job, uh, we will donate X to um, a cause on B1G1 that creates a job for someone else somewhere else in the world or, or within within the UK. Um, and that's all about basically trying to continually use what we're doing now to create more good 
um, and more good things to happen for other people off the back of that. Great motivator for the teams, great motivator for the businesses we work with. Um, we can add our team on there. We can add um, learners on there. Um, and they've all been contributing to all of that piece of piece of work there. But it is literally from business activities, everyday business activities, driving something positive. Um, so I said, why does this matter um, at the beginning? And why does this matter for the employability sector um, and the changing workforce? Um, my, my view is, and research actually shows that people's expectations of work is changing, um, especially in young people. And um, they're more likely to choose um, an environmentally, socially well-governed organisation compared to those that are not. Um, and these things are starting to really, really matter to people. So in terms of recruitment, attraction and retention of staff for businesses, um, these things could maybe give them the edge right now. Um, but if they don't keep up, they are going to be left behind and other businesses are going to take over. Um, at the moment, you know, we've got more jobs than we have people. Um, so all this kind of thing is becoming increasingly important when people have more choices and options of where they can go. Um, it's becoming increasingly important to key stakeholders. So whether this be the government, whether this be local commissioners, um, the LEPs, whether it be local authorities or, or, or these kind of stakeholders, it's becoming more and more important. Um, we're seeing it more within bids, for example, we're seeing more focus on this. So if you're bidding and tendering, you'll start to see um, more of that. Um, it does link into wider strategies. Um, so it is a key for your social justice, for your social mobility and getting people in, into work. Um, and customers are more likely to choose a business with a social or environmental purpose than they are one that doesn't have. So if I put it this way, for example, if you've got two coffee shops that sell exactly the same coffee and they look exactly the same, but every time you buy a cup of coffee from one, they donate something to another cause somewhere else that's having a positive impact. You would pick that cafe over the one that doesn't. And that's the way the world is going, rightly so. Um, so that's the way to think about it. And I think that's the way businesses that you're working with should be thinking about it. And um, I think people will start to make those choices. At the end of the day, it's driven by people, all of this, um, and people are starting to change. Um, research proves that ESG initiatives positively impact the bottom line. So, you know, when I'm talking to employers that say, all oh, this is going to cost me a fortune, um, actually research shows that the bottom line improves when we have um, social and environmental um, focuses um, going, going on. Um, and I do think that people that are not investing in this are going to be left behind and not be economically sustainable. And that's both from even an at home point of view, you know, we're starting, as you know, we get now recycling bins, we've been encouraged to recycle more, but we're going to see that next phase of moving us to renewable energy at home um, and all these kind of things that we're starting to see coming through. And um, there's a big focus on compliance and audits and procurement. Um, my, my view on that is that Compliance and audit can be a tool to do this, but they shouldn't be the driving force behind it. The driving force should always be because we're striving to do the right thing and have the biggest impact we can. Um, so they have a place, but they can also be a barrier where people do things just to be compliant and don't actually consider what else they could be doing or whether that's having the right type of impact. So that's just something to consider on that. Um, and just to let you know that the current rate that we are, the world will not be able to sustain life at its current levels in 200 years. So the next 10 years, they were absolutely critical in changing that, that trend. Um, so this is why we're going to see this ramp up of activity, because to change that, we've, it's, it's this current decade that we're in that's going to be the most impactful in what we need to do. Um, and that's quite a scary number. 200 years sounds a long time, but it, it, it isn't. Um, and we took on the um, policy in our business that whatever decisions we make now in our business, we're considering the impact seven generations from now. Because if we'd done that seven generations ago, we wouldn't be having some of the challenges that we're having now. So one, we've got to try and address the challenges, but two, 
we've also got to think about how we prevent this happening again in the future and kind of get off the hamster wheel. Um, business caused it, business is the answer. Um, so obviously that's going to mean changes for our people going into work. Businesses are going to be changing. So they need to be understanding this and they need to be growing with this to be um, learning and, and keeping current, I suppose, in their job roles. Um, and we've got a real opportunity to upskill people, real, real huge opportunity um, and ensure that they can be really active in contributing in both work and also in life and in their communities. Um, and we can really do this. And then there's the whole point around ethics. It is just the right thing to do. Um, however, there's loads of other benefits as to why we, we should be addressing it. Um, so I suppose just to summarise uh, from your perspective that, you know, this isn't an opportunity to be missed in your industry. Um, we can go beyond regulatory requirements. We can do so much more. But we do also as a sector massively contribute already and some with some alignment, we could perhaps then start to find how we could be more impactful. Um, hopefully I've given you some insight that this isn't a soft and fluffy mission and um, that this is actually critical for our society um, and that we're part of this global community and have a responsibility um, and how much employability plays a critical and fundamental part in this with the relationships with your employers and the relationships with the people that you're trying to get into work um, and that there's nothing to lose by doing this and there's just there's just everything to gain it's all it's all upside um, so that's that and finally just a thank you um, I always donate um, when I do a presentation to someone um, so by doing this 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 has been the donation that 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 will be made um, and this again, it's about creating that decent work and economic growth. I've, I've picked one, hopefully that that you can relate to, um, and hopefully see that by by doing this, we can we can create um, more positive impacts for people somewhere else, and hopefully support their their work. And then I think that's it, Helen. I'll just triple check. I've got another slide. Oh, there's some useful links at the end of the slides if you wanted to go and have a look. Um, and then just to finish off, a big picture of my face. <laughs> and uh, my email phone number and, and LinkedIn profile if uh, if anybody ever wants to get in touch with me got any questions you want to contact feel free just to reach out it's absolutely fine no problem excellent thank you Vicky do you know it's, it's really interesting that your donation I love that idea by the way I wonder if I could get all of the people who come onto the live learn lunch to 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 do that so I, I'm going to see if I can I think that's a <laughs> wonderful idea um they won't thank me when I say it was your idea when I make <laughs> everyone come up now I'm joking I, I think it's a wonderful idea and do you know what actually really interesting talking about sustainability um, and you picking the the sewing machine um, one of the things that me and my partner did a few years ago was, you know, with um, Facebook and these apps that show you pictures from years before, yeah. well, we had a realisation in all of these pictures that were coming up from five, six, seven years ago, we still own those clothes and we were still wearing them and we were like, oh, we're so old fashioned, we need to get rid of our old wardrobes and update our wardrobes and then we really thought about it and we thought but these are good quality clothes and there's actually nothing wrong with them and it's this throwaway fashion culture that's wrong not the fact we're still wearing them so we didn't and I'm really proud that we didn't but I'm still mortified because now these clothes are coming up 12 <laughs> years later but hey ho so it's quite funny that that was one of my first really conscious right let's do more around sustainability things and, and you've picked that that concept of someone having to make those clothes that you're going to wear once or twice from I don't want to name any companies but then throw away and we made a conscious decision to try and step away from that so and it's interesting you picked that because um for those that watch Love Island I don't watch it myself but Love Island's recently changed its sponsors it had fast fashion sponsors and off the back of of Love Island, there was a massive increase in fast fashion, which meant there was an increase in loads of waste. And they've recently changed their sponsors to more sustainable clothing uh, products. And um, again, though, it's a sign of change um, and the influence that that can have on society. However, there was a time where, you know, if you had something from the charity shop, it was deemed as, you know, you were deemed as not being as rich as somebody else or being the outcast whereas now we're seeing a shift yeah. uh, this is really cool the really cool thing to do Definitely. and um, yeah you know I think that kind of movement's really really positive
And it's funny you should say that as well. My daughter, I don't, my daughter's eight and she, I take her into charity shops. We have a lot where I live and we do that, you know, we, and we really, she's into it because they've done it at school. When I was telling her about recycling, she wasn't interested, but Miss Walker at school mentioned it and, and all of a sudden it was the best thing in the world. But we go and do it. We're, we're having a Jubilee party. And instead of buying new, no, we've gone to the charity shops in town to buy the, the 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 crockery and the different things we need and we're yeah. giving to a charity and we're reusing and we will just give that stuff back to the charity shop when we've finished it and they can they can they can um use it again but it ties in doesn't it you say in business business cause the problem business needs to fix it because yeah. one of the other bugbears me and my other half have is how things are no longer built to last uh, yeah. My mother-in-law, when we were first together, boasted about she still used the toaster she was given when she got married at the age of 18. So this, it, it must have been one of the earliest models, but it worked and it lasted and it was wonderful. Whereas, you know, we've bought a washing machine before now and it breaks so quickly. We're like, I cannot believe, you know, we need to replace this already. That's terrible. So yeah. you, you're right in that, that we can fix this by paying more for things or by insisting that we want things to be built to last not you know not new models all the time and I think as well I think it's that it's socially going to get rid of some taboos and some associations with wealth and you know all these things that are barriers for people trying to get out of poverty trying to get their foot on the ladder you know so I think used in the right way this can have a real positive impact for the most vulnerable as well as you know battling the, the challenges that, that they've been having um but I just think there's a huge opportunity and I think our industries employability and education can be really key players in making a huge difference to people I think you're right and and you know this like you've mentioned there used to be stigma didn't there with charity shops and, and you think about the cost of living crisis at the moment there's so much pressure on people to have so much stuff yeah um, and, and the expectations of what we're going to have or what we should have in order to be happy is very different to when I was young so sort of re resetting that perception that actually it's really cool to go in charity shops and it's the right thing to do is a massive yeah. step forward because you know like we say vulnerable people or people who don't have great expendable income no longer feel embarrassed by going around the charity shops because it's yeah. what we're all doing and you find some amazing things in there and it, it's fantastic um, I can yeah. see we've had some comments Tracy said that the fashion show she attended at the weekend had closed from a local charity shop it was an amazing fun night and she did make a purchase and I know some other people who did as well so yeah. that's great I mean I love that idea as well of a, of a charity event stocked from a charity shop to to up sales it's fantastic and, and I do know somebody that's making money off so you know those clothes that you don't wear very often that you buy for a one-off event right that you've been invited to um, and I've got a friend and she hires them all out and she's making money off the back of hiring them all out she's turned it into a little mini side hustle for herself you know and which there's just going to be some great ideas coming through and we've all got loads of clothes in the back of a wardrobe that we've probably worn once and then never got back out and that's what she's been doing um so there's some really cool ideas coming out as well around things like that that's lovely isn't it because I mean I, I keep seeing clothes and I'm like oh I'll buy that even in the charity shops and then I think well when am I going to wear it when would I use it and actually if I could just you know rent something that would be fantastic i can see shannon has said um there's an app she'd like to share it's like instagram but donates every time you share a photo it's called picture healing that yeah. sounds fantastic so that's something that we can all look up um, and yeah. there, there are other things there's lots of these apps now that if you buy things through them you can pick charities that they donate to as well um can't you so um yeah wonderful we haven't had any comments at the moment this group is being quite shy um so have we got any comments or would anyone else like and we can unmute you if you don't want to type and um, has anyone else got any ideas of, of of steps we can take while i'm waiting for people to pop that in yeah and um, i have a question for you around have, have you got any small tips for our frontline practitioners around how they can make an impact and maybe what they can do in the workplace to to get yeah in? I definitely think um, talking to employers, I mean, from my experience, you can't be so boxy about this. That just pushes people away and becomes a barrier. 
And you have to not be judgmental about what people are and aren't doing, because again, that can be a really, really big barrier for people. If they feel like they're going to be judged or made to feel they're bad because they drive a certain car or they do a certain thing, instantly the walls go up and they'll say to you that this is all a load of nonsense. So you have to do it really, really um, gently. What I will say, though, for the, for the people that you're dealing with and getting into work, I think there's an opportunity because if they're going into a business and they know a little bit more about this or they've got a passion for something about this and they can take that with them into work and into a business businesses are crying out for people that understand this or have have a care for it and a passion for it and you know it might sound a bit utopia but you know can be the change makers actually can can be the people in the businesses that raise awareness about what's going on in society and what's going on environmentally for them and the kind of things they're experiencing but I you know I, I definitely think in another 10 years businesses are going to have a sustainability champion for example or sustainability lead um we're seeing it in bigger businesses we're not yet seeing it in smaller businesses but I do think that's coming so again I think there's going to be some new job creation opportunities that come out of this that um when dealing with businesses and people I wouldn't rule it out as something they could do um, and take forward with some help Excellent. Yeah, definitely. And it's interesting, as you say, thinking about the approach we take and making sure we don't come across as telling people off. Because yeah, it does, it does disengage people. And funnily totally. enough, Jubilee, Jubilee linked. Um, I was reading an article this morning um, around the Jubilee pudding. You know, the I, I can't remember what it's called. It's got amaretti in. I, I remember that because I remember picking up on it. And um, uh, Peter and I think the, the vegan society, and I'm really sorry if I've, I've misquoted who it was, have said they're really, you know, they're really, really disappointed in it because it's not um, a vegetarian pudding because it uses gelatin. And I read the article and I probably should say at this stage, I am a vegetarian and a member of Peter. So this is coming from a place of I actually understand what they're saying. They were saying it's a missed opportunity to do something sustainable using non-animal derived products, et cetera. So, and I get that, but the way it was done even switched me off because I, I personally thought what would have been better is to say, we love this pudding and here's how you make it in a sustainable way if you want to. With these simple tweaks, you can change this recipe. Yeah. And it was just for me, as you said, it's just sometimes thinking about how we position that message to make sure it's inclusive for everyone and encourages people. It's got and to it come from a people. positive place. It's got okay. to come from a positive, constructive place if we really want change. At the end of the day, we all do stuff. We've all done stuff. It, it's irrelevant. It's about what we do going forward. Um, so it has to come through from a positive and constructive place. But I think the workplace is going to be a very, very different place um, in the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years whether that's driven partly by compliance and more measures from that point of view um but it'd be even better if it's driven by the businesses and by the people that go to work in those businesses definitely and i can see that maria's popped to comment on here about um one one that's you know massive at the moment around the reduce the use of single use plastic both yeah. at home and in businesses and i think as well i mean as someone who works from home I never print anything off unless I absolutely have to. And the number of times people will email me and ask me to print something off and sign it and send it back. And I push back now and say, well, I have to print that. And then I'm just going to screw it up into a ball and throw it away. But what is it about this? Why do you need me to print it and sign it? Can I not just confirm by email or is there not a better way I can do it? And yeah. just thinking about those things can all make a change, can't they? Um, Shannon has said one of the best ways of feeling good and motivated is to help somehow in your own community. Totally. And, and what what a first stepping stone for people that have been long term unemployed or unemployed at the moment. It's a gentler way, um, but it gives them that feel good factor. It helps to build the confidence and it's all doing really good stuff. So but it's back to that piece of work that we're all doing this in really good ways. It's just linking it together so they can understand the good they're doing and where that fits into the bigger picture um but yeah absolutely i've seen that happen numerous times as well they care about their own community um you know so you got to start with what what people care about and actually it's about changing how we perceive it it is a step towards work isn't it to to gain confidence to be out supporting your community to be involved and to feel part of a, the bigger picture yeah absolutely 
Shannon, we all picked up litter in the park to make it nice for the Jubilee. What a lovely idea. We do a lot of beach cleans here as well for the same reason. And it feels great when you look around and you can see things looking nicer and, and, and you're part of a team that just want things to be nice. Yeah. Um, Nigel has said, but it doesn't matter how much we do as an individual, as long as we do make contributions, many drops eventually make an ocean. If we can start it also if we make starting small be seen as value then success will come absolutely that's that putting the foot on the path that's exactly it and the more the more steps you take the more steps other people will take as well um, and everybody can do something however small everybody can do something definitely yeah like with litter if everybody picks up one piece of litter when they go out on a walk the street's going to be cleaner and everything's going to look nice and, and as you say those drops make an ocean thank you Nigel Anthony says there's a great network that has initiated in Greater Manchester which helps businesses grow and give back and has shared the link for that um so for those watching the video it's https comma forward slash forward slash a n t z u k dot com so thank you for that. And we can check that out. Um, so this is wonderful. Thank you very much. We've got no other comments and questions at the moment. So I am going to thank you very much for your time today, Vicky. Some good food for thought. Um, and what I'd like to encourage everyone to do, we will be sharing the recording via the YouTube channel. And I shared the link earlier. But it'd be really nice if you could maybe reflect after today's session and think about what small changes you can make. Maybe let me know and I can pass that on to Vicky or you can let Vicky know direct. Let us both know what you're doing. Um, and it would be great to know that today's session has had an impact. Yeah, that'd be great. And if there's anything anybody ever needs, just ask. I'm happy to share whatever I've got. Whatever knowledge I'm gleaning, whatever I'm picking up on, quite happy to share. So never fear, just drop me a message um, and happy to help anybody out with whatever they want to know. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So thank you very much for your time today, Vicky. No thank problem. you everyone who came. As I always say, it's wonderful that you choose to spend your Wednesday lunch times with me. It's always engaging today, particularly so. Um, and I look forward to seeing you all next week. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Take thank care. You.